webinar. But for now, uh, Evangelos, you are unmuted, and that's very <laughs> adequate because I'm going to present you. You are Professor Evangelos Yamremelas Wopoulos from the University of Athens in Greece, and you're going to present the Greek uh, COVID-19, BCG COVID-19 trials. Very warmly welcome. Well, thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you for the challenge and uh, the honor to be with you today. Uh, before I go on, please confirm that you can see my screen and uh, that the presentation uh, uh, is uh, going on. So uh, I would like to start. This is my conflict of interest disclosure. I do not have any a specific disclosure for Vic, for BCG vaccination. If you could also confirm that this that the uh, presentation is going on, and uh, okay, so uh, actually I would like to uh, present you the story of what we have done, and uh, someone may say why uh, we stop on July 10, 2020, and uh, actually what I present in uh, this slide is what we have delivered in the supplement of our publication in cell of the activated trial. This is what was the situation at that time. Uh, there is, and there was a feeling that uh, although non, uh, it's not specific against COVID-19, BCG vaccination can protect against COVID-19. And uh, these are trials, the majority of them uh, running in healthcare workers or healthcare professionals, and also, very close to that uh, time of the uh, search, which was July 10, uh, there is a review coming from uh, the group of Professor Natea uh, in cell, suggesting that indeed uh, the induction of trained immunity uh, through BCG vaccination can be a solution to it. When this happened, and when all these trials uh, were uh, ongoing, one of the major questions before addressing it is whether BCG vaccination may harm the patient. Because at that time point, two years ago, everybody has started discovering that COVID-19 was an infection far different than the other types of infections, that there is a strong pro-inflammatory component. So training the cells with BCG may even lead to an opposite direction. In uh, October 2017, after approval by the Greek uh, regulatory authorities, we have started, and uh, that was uh, a design offered by uh, Professor Nutea, a randomized clinical trial on elderly patients. What was the idea? Patients aged 65 or more, they are uh, hospitalized, they are discharged, because they were hospitalized for causes other than infection. And then they are randomized to receive either one shot of placebo vaccine or BCG. These patients are under follow-up for one entire year. And uh, actually the time of follow-up of these patients would be to stop in August 2020. But because all these trials with BCG has started to uh, emerge and they were uh, and the investigators they were in need to know about the safety of this vaccination. In uh, May 2020, we got the initiative that for all the patients, at that time, they have completed their one year of follow up of vaccination to open the trial with the use of uh, a data safety and monitoring board and uh, to do two types of analysis. To analyze the 72, 78 patients who at that time point, they have completed follow-up and they were vaccinated under placebo and the 72, and then 72 who were under BCG vaccination. And also to do a sensitivity analysis for these patients who considering all of them irrespective whether they have completed the one year follow-up. And we were taken by extreme surprise to realize that in our primary, which was the time to the first infection, either respiratory tract infection, intradominal infection, 
is urinary tract infection, skin infection, that BCG vaccination was protective. And it was protective at a ratio of 45%, which was enormous. And the uh, stepwise Cox forward regression analysis showed that in the presence of chronic renal disease and COPD, which were other covariates, which were severely imposing on the overall study cohort, BCG vaccination was an independent protective factor. So the primary endpoint was less. But the secondary endpoint is not just what is happening in the infections in a cumulative approach, but what are the specific infections against which our study population was getting protection. And we realized that the real benefit, a significant benefit of 75% was for all type of respiratory infections and particularly of respiratory infections of probable viral origin. And then all of a sudden, the idea came that we need immediately to address our results to our national regular authority and to get approval for a large scale trial in Greece. Remember, we are now at the beginning of May 2020. The population is unprotected. There are no specific anti SARS CoV 2 vaccines. And there is something that has urgently needs to be done. What is the in my opinion, important feature of our publications at cell is not just the findings, but we provide a mechanism explaining the findings. So you see that after three months post vaccination, the PBM, the circulating mononuclear cells of patients they, who uh, have experienced BCG, they respond better to stimulation with. Uh, 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 pump resist with heat kill candida albicans, and they produce higher concentrations of TNF alpha, VAL1 beta, and IL 10. And uh, if we go deeper, you see that this fitness of the cells for better cytokine production after ex vivo stimulation has to do with the epigenetic traits that has already been presented to you by Professor Nakia. Allow me now to go to something which was actually the motivation to do this urgent unblinding of the trial and the interim analysis. The safety profile of the patients. And we present it in two ways, at least one serious adverse event, which is not an infectious disease, which has nothing to do with the primary and you see that 38.5% of patients vaccinated with placebo, they have at least one serious adverse event. I remind you, these are elderly patients, patients with comorbidities, compared to 23.6% of patients vaccinated with BCG. And uh, there is a marginal protection from BCG vaccination from other events, which are not infectious diseases. And if, we analyze that further. And if we could make a cumulative expression of what are actually these patients being protected from, it is obvious that they are protected from causalities leading to new hospitalizations, basically from events that are of cardiovascular origin. And uh, we addressed the, the message to our national regulatory authority and in parallel, we tell them. So far, we have conducted the ACTIVATE trial. Now we want to do the ACTIVATE 2 trial for both males and females, aged 50 or more, but who are prone to infection by COVID-19 because they have at least one comorbidity. And what this comorbidity can be, either a medical history of coronary heart disease 
or medical history of COPD or a child's comorbidity index fever hormone. These patients, they need to be negative, seronegative, IgG and IgM for COVID-19, and also they need to be negative in their skin tuberculin test. Exclusion criteria. Actually, the main exclusion criteria that do not allow a patient to, or a health individual to be vaccinated with BCG. Infection by HIV, immune deficiencies, solid organ transplantation or bone marrow transplantation, recent intake of chemo or radiotherapy, active malignancy, recent intake of anti-cytokine therapies, or intake the last three months of oral or IV steroids. And then the major question, the major confounder for this type of, of uh, clinical trials, which as the time goes on, becomes more and more difficult. What we vouch as the primary, because the primary endpoint should by definition be the incidence of COVID-19. So one option, have a situation which is definitely COVID-19 in other terms, no diagnosis by molecular test. But we know from the very beginning that the patients may have symptoms compatible with COVID-19, but they are escaping diagnosis. In other terms, during study visits, we are in need to deliver to our patients a questionnaire, a questionnaire according to which patients are classified as having either possibly possible COVID-19 or probable COVID-19 or definitive COVID-19. Definite of course, COVID-19 means documented infection. Possible means that all four symptoms which are shaded by green, they are positive. Probable that at least two of the six symptoms which are shaded by blue, that they are positive. And the primary endpoint is after 90 days, assessed on what we call visit three, the incidence, the difference of the incidence between the two groups of possible, probable, definite COVID-19, all of them as a composite endpoint. And the secondary endpoints, exactly the same incidence, but after 135 days and after 180 days. Allow me to show you the flow chart of the patients. And all of a sudden, we discover, and that was a real disappointment before the wave against vaccination arrived. We did a huge campaign in Greece. We went hospital by hospital. We printed material. We printed pamphlets. We distributed them. We stood outside uh, churches. We stood outside schools. We delivered that to people. We invited them. We invited through Facebook to join the tribe. And yet, after a lot of effort, only 516 patients arrived to be assessed for an epidemic. From that, immediately we notified our government that the campaign in favor of COVID vaccination would have been extremely difficult. And actually we know that because it ended up to be obligatory to persuade people to get vaccinated. But look, what is the major cause of exclusion from the trial? The positive skin tuberculin test, almost one out of two patients have a positive skin tuberculin test, which means that we are at a population who has already been exposed to TB. And this may be an apparent difference of the explanation of our findings of what is happening in European countries. Our IDD population was 153 patients randomized to vaccination with placebo, 148 randomized to, to vaccination with 
DCG, but you see that over follow-up, we lose patients. So we have a confirmatory sensitivity analysis for patients who have completed the follow-up on the specific time point. Allow me to present you first the baseline demographics of our patient population. You see that they are patients at risk. The majority, they are aged more than 60. There is a lot of comorbidities, a lot of coronary heart disease, chronic heart failure, type 2 diabetes, hypertension more than 30%, COPD almost 25%, and past uh, problems with chronic renal disease and peripheral vascular disease. Evangelos, just uh, let, allow me to tell you just a few minutes left of your presentation, please. Okay, you... I conclude in two minutes, don't worry. <laughs> okay, great. So this is the primary endpoint and all the analysis today. These are the intention to treat population. And you see that the incidence of COVID-19 in the placebo group is a bit above 5%, and it statistically went down to the population treated with DCG. And as we go on, and what you see is the cumulative percentage, is that it's going better on day 135 and day 180. When we go to the sensitivity analysis, again, the same finding. And when we went to our univariate and multivariate analysis, the univariate analysis showed among the total patient population that what is driving COVID-19 is BCG vaccination, which is protected, coronary heart disease, which is favoring the infection, type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is favoring the infection, and risk of hospitalization. And when you bring all of them to multivariate analysis, the only factor which is protective of our population is BCG vaccination. And I would like to end with the treatment emergent adverse events. And I'm extremely happy because these treatment emergent adverse events, they are confirming the findings of our previous ACTIVATE trial. The incidence of all type of upper respiratory tract infection is significantly going down with BCG. So the main benefits by definition in the elderly individuals, decrease of the incidence of viral infection, decrease of all respiratory infection, and most important, the only advers adversities are skin erythema and skin pain, but no risk for the life of the patient, either short-term or long-term. Thank you very much for this great invitation. Thank you so much, Evangelos. That was beautiful. Uh, two fantastic trials that you have been conducting also in a very short time. There, uh, we are uh, running short of time also here, but just allow me for, for one question. Did you assess, you assess the tuberculin uh, response? Did you also assess the BCG scarification of your participants? And did you have anybody who hadn't got a BCG scar from previous BCG vaccination? Uh, no, we didn't. You didn't assess the we scar? We didn't have, we didn't have. So, so I mean, the... BCG scar. Yes. okay. Thank you very much for that information and for your for your great presentation.